Hi, everybody. So today we are going to be talking about xanthomas. So what are xanthomas? Well, basically, they're like little yellow plaques that build up on the skin. So we're going to talk about how you get those. So basically, like we said, it's a localized lipid deposit in an organ system. So we're going to talk about the most common areas in just a few minutes. But basically, you just get lipids building up, and we'll talk about why. They're usually due to something called dyslipidemias, okay? So you can have two different t causes of dyslipidemia. The first one could be genetic, right, which you're going to be born with, and familial hypercholesterolemia is an example of that. And then you can get secondary, which we call acquired dyslipidemia. So that could be due to your diet. It could be due to diabetes, hypothyroidism, nephrotic syndrome, biliary cirrhosis, right? Or you can get it from medications such as beta blockers if you have heart problems, estrogen, or diuretics. So let's take a look at the cause of these, right, or what exactly is going to happen in these. So we said it could be due to genetics. So here's the whole thing is you're going to get a buildup of something called lipoproteins in the blood. <clears throat> so basically, we're going to be talking about three different types of lipoproteins. We're going to be talking about low density lipoproteins. These carry cholesterol. And then you can have what we call, what we call chylomicrons. Chylomicrons, these are going to carry triglycerides, right? They're going to carry triglycerides. And then you can have very low density lipoproteins, and these also carry triglycerides. Now, let's take a look at why these can build up if it's something that has to do with genetics of the body. Let's say this is my lipoprotein, right? And then what's going to happen is we need to, is these are going to be carrying either cholesterol or triglycerides. Well, either way, you're going to have something called low density lipase which will actually cleave this cell or cleave this lipoprotein, right? And when it cleaves the lipoprotein, the triglycerides or the cholesterol can come out and it can be used by the cell of where they're at, usually adipose or muscle, right? So the LDL light or the low density lipase will cleave the cell, releasing the cholesterol and releasing the triglycerides. And then those can be used by the cells, right, to make either hormones or for energy or whatever. So now the first thing that can happen is if we don't have LDL or uh, low, low density lipase, if we don't have that, what's going to happen is this never gets cleaved, it never gets used, and it starts to build up in the bloodstream. That's the first thing that can happen. The second thing that can happen is attached to these, you have a protein called an opoprotein. And what these are is they are proteins that can actually help this attach to a cell. Okay, so, so this is my apoprotein here. Apoprotein E is a very common one for, for these here. And so what's going to happen now is if these aren't designed properly, if there's a defect in these, or you don't make them at all, this, this lipoprotein cannot attach to cells. And if it can't attach to cells, then what's inside can't be used. Then they start to build up in the bloodstream. The third thing that can happen is on the cells themselves, they have a receptor, right? So here's my receptor here. And what will happen is they may have defective receptors or they may not even have receptors, right? But either way, if we have a problem with these receptors, then this, this light, uh, lipoprotein cannot bind to this. And if it can't bind to this, this will build up. So I can get, a, I can get an error on this side or on this side, right, on this cell or on this side, right? Or it could be the enzyme that's responsible for breaking this down. So there's just some things that can happen that can lead to an increase in lipoprotein. So let's take a look at this now of what happens here. This is going to be my bloodstream here. This is the lumen of a blood vessel right here. And these are going to be what we call endothelial cells. Now, in real life, endothelial cells are actually flat cells, right? They're squamous, right? I just have them drawn like that because they're easier to see. So the first thing we're going to look at is, is when we have xanthomas due to hypercholesterolemia. So I get an increase in cholesterol in the blood. Now, this can be due to a few different things. This could be due to diet, right? Or it could be due to type 2 dyslipidemia, type 2A dyslipidemia. Or it can be due to type 2B dyslipidemia. So in type 2A uh, dyslipidemia, I'm going to get an increase in my LDLs. In type 2B, I'm going to get an increase in my LDLs, 
but you're also going to get an increase in your VLDLs. Okay, remember this carries cholesterol, this is going to carry triglycerides, and this is going to be important coming in just a little bit. So now here's the whole thing. I have my LDL, right? I have my lipoprotein here inside of my bloodstream. And inside of this, let's say I have cholesterol, right? So there's my cholesterol inside of this. And like I said, this is my LDL. Well, as these build up, or just even in normal, what these will do is they'll go through these endothelial cells into different areas. So let's talk about the areas that this is going to affect. It can affect anywhere in the body, but the most common areas are going to be the subcutaneous layers, right, of the skin. So it's the subcutaneous layer. It can also go into the dermis, or it can go into tendons. Like I said, it can infect or go into any area of the body, but this is going to be the most common areas. So now I have my LDL in here with its cholesterol, right? And what's going to happen now is I am going to have a macrophage come by. And what the macrophage is going to do is it's going to phagocytize this. And when it phagocytizes this, it's going to create something called a foam cell. So now I got my foam cell right here, right? Now, because we're getting a buildup of this cholesterol here, because we're getting a buildup of this, we're going to start to get a buildup of our, of our foam cells. And they're going to start to increase in numbers, right? So these will start to increase in numbers. And we'll get more and more foam cells. Well, as these foam cells build up, and remember, this can also just start in a dermis, right? As these build up, eventually what these will do is they're going to continue to rise, and eventually they're going to basically push up on the dermis as these accumulate. And then we're going to get more and more foam cells up here. And this will end up making a xanthoma. Now, this can be around the eyes. It can be in different areas around the skin. So we have those foam cells due to the fact that we're getting a buildup on here. It can also get into tendons. It's going to be basically the same thing, but this is going to involve more of the triglycerides here and cause something that we call an eruptive uh, xanthoma, which we'll get into in just a minute. It can also just be due to the cholesterol, but it's going to be basically the same thing. So I'm going to have my cell here, right? This is going to be the LDL or VLDL. It's going to go through the endothelial cells in this case, it's coming here into this tendon, right? And now it's going to be the same thing. We're going to get the macrophage creating foam cells. Okay, and then this is going to build up again as we get more and more foam cells and eventually start to form xanthomas in the tendon. These are called tendinous xanthomas. Okay, so there's my xanthoma there. So that's if it's, I have increased cholesterol levels, right? Let's take a look now. What if my cholesterol levels are not increased? So let's take a look right over here. Now what's going to happen is we're going to have normal cholesterol levels. So this is normal cholesterol levels in the blood, okay? This can, is going to be due to an inc these anthomas are going to be due to an increase in triglycerides. And we call that hyper triglyceridemia. All right, so we get an increase in triglycerides, right? And so what's going to happen now is this can be due to a few different types of um, dyslipidemias also. We can get this in type 1 dyslipidemia. And in this case, I'm going to get an increase in chylomicrons. I can get type 4 dyslipidemia. In this case, I'm going to have an increase in the VLDL. And then I'm going to have type 5, in which I can get an increase in both chylomicrons and VLDL. So now, here's what's going to happen here. Here is either my chylomicron or my VLDL, right? And this is the triglyceride inside here. Right, so this is going to be my triglyceride inside of here. These, though, are going to be associated with trauma. 
So we're going to have either trauma, and with trauma comes what? We get inflammation, right? So I have trauma and I have inflammation. Well, what happens when we get trauma and inflammation? We get openings now between these endothelial cells here. And when we get those, now this will come out. And basically, it's going to go into the same areas as, as we saw with the other ones, right? But now it's going to be the same exact thing. So I have this inside here, and then here's my triglyceride, and then here comes my macrophage. It's going to phagocytize this, and it's going to do what? It's going to form foam cells. And what's going to happen is these foam cells are going to start to build up, right? And then the same exact thing like we saw a minute ago is this is going to push out on here, and then we're going to have a xanthoma. Now, the thing about these xanthomas is they occur quickly. And because they occur quickly, we can also get rid of them quickly if we change diet and things such as that. These are going to be called eruptive xanthomas. Okay, so these are eruptive xanthomas. They occur quickly, and then if we control our diet and things such as that, they'll go away quickly. All right? And we can also get that down in here, because remember, we're talking about VLDL. If we get an increase in VLDL, we can get eruptive xanthomas down in these cases, too. Normally, these are going to be on the extensive surfaces of the body or areas of the body that undergo a lot of trauma. Um, the buttocks will get these, too. So that's the eruptive xanthoma. Okay? So that's it for Xanthomas. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button, and we will catch you next time.